Hello everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management NPTEL course. This is week two, lecture three. In this, we are looking at the importance of groundwater resources, both internationally and nationally. To better understand and manage groundwater, it is very important to estimate where groundwater is used more and what are the chief uses for the groundwater. Also, it is important to understand which countries are consuming more groundwater uh, and also what are the plans and management activities they are undergoing. We are still in the past two lectures looking at the stress on the groundwater system. So let's continue with that discussion and notes. The last class we uh, looked at this slide um, by the end, where we looked at water stress and groundwater. So this uh, data, which is um, on water index, uh, uh, is uh, made by WRI in 2013. And you could see uh, red colors indicating extremely high stress on water resources, regions with extremely high stress. No data is where they could not collect data, whereas uh, the uh, yellow is low, low stress um, and low to medium would be in the orange color. So just looking at the baseline water stress, the current scenario uh, where the water stress is high, uh, you could see most of the water stress in the Asian region, uh, especially in India, uh, Afghanistan, Iran, those kind of regions, uh, and also along the agricultural belt. Thailand, etc. You also see a lot of water stress in the African region, uh, both in the north and south, uh, and European uh, contacts along with the developed nations of US, uh, Canada, and Australia. Pockets, very small, small pockets. The extremely high water stress is mapped along uh, the uh, Indian subcontinent, um, uh, where groundwater and water resources are heavily used to supply water for the big population uh, and also for agricultural and industrial activities. So if you map the groundwater uses that we looked at in the previous lectures, you could clearly see that the water stress already mapped across the globe also mimics your groundwater use. So why would someone spend energy and take groundwater is when you have water stress. So if a region has good groundwater um, resources, they won't use it until there is a stress. For example, you have good dams and connections to water that you see in uh, US and uh, in Chinese regions, you don't see much water stress. So only when the water is not enough, you would spend energy, either electric energy, diesel pumps, fossil fuel burning pumps, solar energy to extract groundwater. So the water stress and groundwater go together uh, hand in hand uh, to explain that people would go to extremes uh, and also costly methods to get water because that is what drives the economy. Uh, if it is agricultural nations, example, India, uh, Vietnam, those kind of countries, uh, and or for development, industrial development like China, US, etc. If you look at US, even there, you have a lot of agricultural activity on the uh, southern, uh, southwestern part, California, uh, and there you could see a lot of uh, water stress and also groundwater use. Um, so all these clearly indicate that wherever there's a water stress, um, uh, either the government or the locals uh, would uh, extend their groundwater use uh, to tackle the groundwater issues. This actually uh, cumulatively impacts your groundwater sustainable use. Let's see how uh, these groundwater, global groundwater change occurs. So we've looked at water stress and we're going to look at uh, the major aquifers and how the annual groundwater change is this uh, data from the Earth Observatory of NASA uh, clearly documents that the annual change in groundwater is really concerning in uh, most of the uh, major aquifers across the world. So 
about one third of Earth's large groundwater basins, or as we call them in groundwater terminology, uh, are, are rapidly depleted. Uh, and mostly for anthropogenic use. Humans uh, consume it for domestic use, industrial use, or agricultural use. There's very less data uh, because not all regions are monitored by uh, observation wells. So this study uh, from NASA uses satellites. It's a very uh, novel and very high-tech uh, use of satellites to monitor groundwater. Uh, we will discuss that when we come to tools for groundwater estimation. Here, the study results clearly show that most of the big aquifers, one third of the big aquifers across the globe are highly stressed. The annual change in groundwater is in negative. So negative is represented by brown color. Uh, and what it means that every year your groundwater is coming down. There's no recharge. There's no going up uh, in the ladder. So the volumes where you see the positives are mostly in uh, Australia, some parts of Africa, um, uh, and regions of North and South America, where agriculture is happening, I would say. Uh, the other regions are not that of much of interest because in, in these parts, not much agricultural activity happens. Uh, remember, we discussed the uh, groundwater economies, socio economies. Uh, here, there's not much in Canada and Russia groundwater use for agriculture. So let's focus on the regions uh, where groundwater is used for agriculture. Uh, and you could clearly see that uh, the major aquifers that are giving water for agriculture are highly stressed. And as a result, every year your groundwater comes down. Is this sustainable? Certainly not. Because you are taking, think about the analogy I use for a bank account, you're taking, continuously taking amount without putting it back. So how much can you take? Only until you run out of the groundwater. Okay, and once you run out, it is going to be disastrous. So it is very, very important for groundwater management. Um, and this image clearly shows you where the hotspots are for uh, groundwater depletion, especially in Asian regions uh, and along the um, regions where there's less rainfall, uh, like Middle Eastern, African regions, etc. There's still less amount of data. So this also uh, is, is uh, urging for, for uh, policymakers and scientists to collect more observation data uh, to better monitor groundwater use. So the annual change in millimeter thickness of groundwater, I'll explain the units later, uh, is in the negative. So you compare the previous year to this year, already minus 20 millimeters uh, in India. Then you go on and on. If you want the volume, you can multiply it by the area to get the volume. Uh, so it is equal in water thickness uh, is, is tremendously falling down. Moving on from another study by IGRAC, the previous NASA study was in uh, 2015. Uh, this one, uh, IGRAC is an international organization for groundwater uh, studies, uh, also shows a similar pattern in 2014. What they've done is they've taken a year, a 2010 as the study year uh, and uh, developed a groundwater development stress map. So where the groundwater development and stress is happening a lot. Uh, and you could see that is made by using the two values. One is abstraction and the annual recharge. So you have your bank account, you know how much uh, money is coming in and how much you're taking out including all the uh, users. Okay. So that is what they've done here in this example. Um, and they've mapped it across the globe as continents uh, and national boundaries. What you clearly see is the abstraction rate um, uh, is really, really concerning in the Asian region. Um, and uh, all the less than 2% of annual recharge is very, very good, which means you're not abusing your groundwater, you're not using much. Uh, uh, and the two to 20% is also pretty good until 50%, no problem. Okay, so if you look at the light, light brown colors, uh, up to 50%, there's not much problem. Uh, and the up to 20%, uh, the governments should look at how can you better access this groundwater for a better economic development, let's say Africa. So as I said, there's a lot of groundwater here, a lot of recharge happening. 
uh, but not much groundwater use. So can you think of activities where you could uh, put in some groundwater networks for better uh, water use uh, for sanitation, health, uh, and other economic activities, agriculture, livestock, etc. But since this is a course on groundwater management, we have to discuss on the stresses, on where the concern is. So if you go to the darker brown colors of 50 to 100 percent, you could see the countries uh, which are using more than actually what is coming in. So basically, you are using water that has been stored for years and centuries uh, because you're already taking out all the annual groundwater uh, and you're eating into the reserves or something that you save for a long time. So India uh, would come under the 100% uh, almost uh, range. And if you break it into states, you'll see some states will go above and beyond the 100%, which is really, really concerning. So in this uh, map, you see uh, the uh, northern parts of Africa, Middle Eastern countries, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, Pakistan, all extracting more water than they get. So basically, they're extracting water from the previous years and uh, uh, historic groundwater, as we call it. Uh, whereas India, it's on average. On average, it is between 50 to 100 percent of the uh, groundwater, according to this study, uh, which is also very concerning because you're not leaving any groundwater for the next year. Suppose the next year is a flood year, a good rainfall year, then um, uh, there are three scenarios. The next year could be a good rainfall year a good flood year with a lot of water uh, and a drought year. So these are the three basic scenarios. Uh, if it is a good rainfall year, uh, your recharge is happening. So you're not worried too much because you extracted and the next year water comes in, fine. In a flood year, not all the water will go into your aquifer because the big floods will carry the water out of your watershed, not enough time for recharge. So that is a very concerning situation. Moving on, we have the other as a drought, which is the most common uh, stress during climate change. What happens? So you've already taken 100% of your groundwater that has been recharged. So you don't have much water for the next year where there's a big stress and not much annual recharge happening. So suddenly you will have to change how you use groundwater and or how do you manage groundwater. That aspect is very, very important for better groundwater management. So uh, India ranks right there of 50 to 100 percent, which means uh, we are seeing climate change extremes of droughts and floods. Uh, and if we don't manage the groundwater, the next years, you will not have enough groundwater for sustaining your activities, sustaining your agriculture or even drinking water supply. So it is very important to manage that. Another study, very uh, uh, coincidentally, so that this was done by IGRAC in 2014, uh, and the previous was done by NASA in 2015. Uh, another study by Richie et al., uh, also using the NASA collaborators, uh, showed that one third of the order basins are in distress. Similar findings, uh, and uh, what uh, you uh, notice here is that uh, the labeling of where these aquifers are, the major aquifers. Um, for example, let's take it from the Indian region. Uh, number 23 is the Indus Basin. Uh, it is uh, in the negative, okay? So which means every year your groundwater is depleting. Uh, so right from your yellow, uh, it is all in the negative, still red. And uh, white to uh, 25, which is the blue, is okay. So blue means it is recharging, which is fine. So if you look at where the positives are happening, Central Australia, Northern Russia, uh, parts of Canada and US and South America, where not much of agricultural use is happening in these regions, even Africa. When you come to the uh, yellow and uh, orange regions where uh, it is depleting but not as uh, drastically uh, is still a big concern. You could see the Indus uh, region here, uh, the number 23 Indus Basin is depleting faster uh, along with number 29 which is the North China aquifer system and number 33 uh, which is your Russian uh, platform basins. 
Okay, so all these are pretty concerning in terms of it is a warning bell. You would need to start better managing the groundwater. Uh, number twenty-two, including uh, which is the Arabian Aquifer System. Uh, all these are warning bells that you need to stop using how you're using groundwater because you're already taking more than what is coming in. Okay, you are in the negatives. If you don't, then it will become red. Uh, or very, very highly warning situation, such as that exhibited in the Ganges water basin and Brahmaputra, which is under 24. So Ganges Brahmaputra basin, you could see it is in red color along Nepal, uh, parts of China and Tibet, India, uh, Bangladesh, all are facing tremendous groundwater uh, extraction. Um, and because of that groundwater stress, uh, along with number 34, uh, basin, which is the North Caucasus Cauc uh, uh, Basin. Uh, these are the major basins which are highly, highly under distress, minus 20 millimeters uh, of equal water thickness per year. So now you see a spatial distribution of where these water resources are uh, major in the groundwater basins. Uh, and also you can clearly see where the groundwater aquifers are highly depleting. Now, if you compare this with your previous lectures, uh, typical crops that they grow, you can clearly understand that the crops that they grow are not going to be sustainable, uh, especially let's take India here, for example, we looked at rice, wheat and other crops. So if you just look at rice and wheat and sugarcane, this constituted around 75% of the groundwater that we use. Uh, and that is not going to be sustainable as per this figure's uh, estimates of groundwater depletion. Every year, groundwater is depleting. So if you don't stop and reorganize yourself, uh, then the groundwater system is going to be lost. You will not be able to grow your sugarcane, wheat, and rice as you were growing. This could lead to uh, equity issues because not all farmers have access to groundwater uh, and not all farmers can uh, spend more money to dig deeper and have uh, high energy pumps, uh, high efficiency pumps to be used for agriculture. Okay. So this is where a lot of equity and poor and, uh, and rich farmer divide is going to happen. Uh, so uh, it is very important to understand where these aquifers are, what are they growing in the aquifers, uh, and is the volume, is the volume uh, rechargeable? Minus 20 is very hard to bring it back to zero for annual change. Uh, and how are we going to do it? So how do we do it? By the introduction of some policy and governance, uh, we could quickly look uh, across the world uh, where they have introduced these policies and uh, how they are different uh, when it comes to groundwater management. So here you can quickly look at where the uh, major aquifers are and major depletions are happening and we could that with the instruments of groundwater governance deployed in these major irrigation countries. What we saw is uh, Australia is a major irrigation uh, country uh, using groundwater. Uh, they don't have groundwater pricing or, or any type of metering to uh, groundwater as per uh, in 2014. Um, and uh, there are some entitlements, which means they would. Uh, legalize certain people to use uh, groundwater. So entitlements are given uh, and administrative regulations are there. There'll be some checking and uh, monitoring of these uh, groundwater, but there's no pricing. So there is some regulations, uh, but not much pricing. There's no community management or recharge uh, development and indirect approaches are not present. So because, and also they're not much concerned because Australia's water resources, uh, as per the previous uh, figure, are not much depleted uh, or in the red zone. When you come to Bangladesh, which is in the red zone for sure, uh, there are meters present. So meters are being present in the uh, country to monitor the groundwater use, which is a very uh, important step uh, in identifying uh, equitable share and where the groundwater is going. The others are not present. The other uh, mechanisms are not present. If you come to China, uh, yes, groundwater uh, pricing is there. So uh, consumers have to pay as per the unit of groundwater they use. Uh, and uh, the use is also given, guided by administrative regulations, uh, entitlements, 
uh, and also a lot of community management is happening. I'll come to India uh, as the last so that we can discuss more, uh, but Iran and Jordan work similarly. They have uh, meters for groundwater use and they price it per volume uh, use, uh, which is governed by some administrative regulations. Uh, and uh, Mexico uh, is guided by entitlements. Only some people can use groundwater or you have to get permission. And uh, that uh, is also being metered uh, with some community management. Oman, Pakistan, Spain also follow administrative regulations uh, and also work on collective recharge methods. Uh, US, which is the uh, another big country using groundwater, uh, are, are uh, not allowing uh, everyone to put in groundwater. Uh, you cannot casually put groundwater. You need to get entitlements. Um, and also, it has to go through the government, where you want to put the wells, how much water you want to use. There's no pricing, but it has to be through regulated uh, government entitlements. Uh, and there are some community and recharge enhancement methods uh, to increase the fresh water in these aquifers. Now coming to India, there is no groundwater pricing. We have more than 20 million wells. So think about uh, you're going to price or meter all the wells. It's going to be really expensive, uh, really time consuming, and also will lead to a lot of um, sensitive issues like uh, in estimating who's using more water uh, and is it uh, accurate readings and those kind of issues will happen. It's not as easy as just monitoring the power uh, because groundwater is not readily uh, converted to your crop output because your crop might not grow for various reasons, but it can be blamed on groundwater. Like fertility, uh, water loss during application of groundwater, all these issues. Okay, so because of that, there is no groundwater pricing. Uh, if you go to across India, you will not find groundwater pricing for irrigation nor domestic use. Uh, there's no entitlements, which means everyone has the right to put uh, in a groundwater farmers, I'm saying, and they can pick a location in their own farm. They put it or they have a community well uh, with an agreement with the uh, villagers uh, and or the community, which means four farmers can come together and then put in a well. So those entitlements are not needed in India. There's no administrative regulations, which means if there are two farmers, two different wells, uh, there's no regulation on what depth the well should be. And there's no regulation on what volume farmer A should pump and farmer B. So for example, farmer A can pump more than uh, 20,000 uh, kilometer uh, cubic meters per year, whereas farmer B cannot afford that much power uh, and he or she just pumps 1,000 cubic meter per year. There's big difference because there's no regulation. However, uh, if there's regulations like in the US, it is set at a particular rate and you cannot go above it. You can come below it, which is fine, but if you go above it, you'll have to pay extra or shut down your license for groundwater. So in India, that is not available. And this has led to unsustainable use. Uh, and also it is becoming harder to monitor which areas exactly are using more groundwater. So for example, if I can take a village boundary, there are multiple wells in the, in the village. It's very hard to distinguish who has more extracted more water because there is no metering. And they don't follow the rules on, uh, I will use water only at this time. Also, if the power that is needed for groundwater extraction is given at a very low cost, what would happen is sometimes the farmers would pump more than what is needed uh, and the water will either go down into the aquifer or get evaporated, uh, which is a loss to the system. Okay. So that's where the regulations and entitlements could help, but it's very complex to get them implemented. And because of that, there are community uh, aquifer management programs uh, something, uh, some, it different, depends on where uh, these schemes are introduced. Uh, for example, there's a scheme called MARGI, Managed Aquifer Recharge Through Village Level Interventions, where the community comes together, they manage the groundwater in Saurashtra region, Dartha, etc., and they properly document what can uh, constitute um, a good sustainable groundwater use a plan that all the villages accept uh, to agree to uh, use in their system. Also, they have a recharge uh, enhancement uh, or 
conjugated uh, groundwater surface water management plans. Uh, something as an example is given in the Saurashtra recharge movement. Also, indirect approaches are there, which is an example of Gujarat's Jyoti Gram. So, all these um, uh, progressive states or states that value groundwater more, uh, they have put in a lot of measures to actually increase the groundwater, reduce the consumption, and also monitor the groundwater use. The governments have also noticed that uh, it is going to be difficult for a government agency to uh, set up these regulations. Uh, however, if you train the community, the community also knows how much water is available uh, and the community can decide as a unit uh, where the water should be and how the water should be. For example, if you have a government regulating you that you should only use a thousand meter cube per well per year, and two farmers are there and they don't agree because they cannot grow uh, what they want, then there is disharmony. Then the plan will flop. But if a community comes together, for example, all the farmers in a particular village, they come together and assess the situation. This is how much groundwater we have and all of us will collectively grow only mustard. This year, we will not grow cotton or sugarcane. It will need more groundwater uh, and we will not grow it for the benefit of the village. So all the villages will grow mustard, uh, conserve the groundwater and use it for the next year, provided there's good um, benefits. So this mechanism is kind of the community uh, use of groundwater. Uh, and when they use also, they also do some aquifer management plans, wherein they construct uh, buns and other natural uh, types to recharge the groundwater, catch the surface water, and then recharge it into the ground. So you could see that India groundwater use scenario is changing, at least in the management aspect, uh, but much, much more is needed because the volume uh, that we extract is at a very uh, large pace. And so for this, uh, it is very important to understand the groundwater availability in India. Yeah, I'm going to discuss the central groundwater bores data, which is the uh, predominant uh, groundwater monitoring. And what you can see here is there are different basins uh, in India, and uh, the key basins are the uh, Brahmaputra, Indus, and Ganges basin. Um, and uh, the first uh, column talks about the basin names, uh, whereas the uh, next column looks at how much groundwater is actually being recharged and then out of that how much is being used for domestic uh, industrial uses uh, comparatively uh, and then if you subtract both after your domestic and industrial use uh, most of it is available for your irrigation but only x amount for number six column only some amount of number five is used for irrigation it could be because they don't need it or uh, they don't have the resources to extract the groundwater. Moving on, uh, then we look at uh, how much is remaining. So number seven is how much is remaining uh, for groundwater use. And the level of development is the ratio of water available to the balanced water. So uh, what you see is the ratio here, the last column, represents the total replenishable uh, water uh, and the uh, how much water is actually being used, level of groundwater development. So only 3%, which is used in the Brahmaputra basin. Okay, so uh, you have a lot of excess water remaining, which is also shown here as balance, number seven column. So let's see quickly, how do you come to these numbers? Uh, so three is your recharge, which is estimated from the rainfall and geology. Um, number four is based on your, your uh, number of industries and population. Uh, available for irrigation is just a subtraction of uh, three minus four, uh, which gives you five. Uh, and then the net draft is how much water is actually used as per the irrigation and agriculture departments. Uh, and if number seven is just basically five minus six. So the percentage of groundwater development or how much is extracted uh, is the ratio of the total available 
uh, for irrigation or for the total uh, replenishable groundwater uh, and uh, how much draft, the total draft which has been used. Okay. So it is only 3% in the Brahmaputra basin. Uh, let's neglect the smaller basins in terms of percentage of development. As we notice, anywhere from 20 to 50 uh, is on the borderline of being concerned. So if you look at that, uh, 20 to 50, uh, Kambay Composite, uh, the Kaveri Basin, uh, the Ganges Basin uh, are all under the 13, 20 to 50 almost region, the Kutch, Saurashtra region, etc. The concern is when you go above and beyond it. For example, the Indus Basin. As we clearly saw, the both the Indus on the Pakistan side and India side are tremendously exploited for groundwater. And as a result, in, in the Indian side, we see 77 percent of the water is being used. Uh, and most of the water, if you look at the numbers, is being used for agriculture. So out of the 26,000 uh, million cubic meter per year, uh, you are using around uh, 18,000 million cubic meter per year. That is around 77 uh, percent uh, of groundwater development. Moving on, you also see around 57 percent in the Madras and Southern uh, Basin. Um, and also I can include here again the Kaveri Basin, which is about 55 percent. So at a basin scale, these are the different numbers, but when you break it into blocks and the districts and state, uh, you will see a different, different picture because every state will have their own uh, groundwater uh, use uh, preferences. Um, and also the based on the population and agriculture, the groundwater use will be different. So this introduction to availability of groundwater in India, I will move in the next lecture to discuss the uh, groundwater um, per block, how much it is, and what are the issues and concerns uh, right now uh, where we need to put in more effort for groundwater management. Uh, I will see you in the next class on the same lines to discuss on issues on groundwater for India. So the, over the past a couple of days, we are looking at mostly the importance of groundwater internationally. Uh, and then we slowly moved into the uh, subcontinent uh, and Asian regions. And now we're moving into the Indian context of groundwater issues and things. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.